I am an American Airman, and I am gay. I live and work in Washington, D.C. I return to Kansas regularly to perform my duties with the Kansas Air National Guard. This month, however, I was able to sit down with my parents and talk about something that I'd wanted to for quite a while. If David had chosen to die by suicide, I would have been totally devastated. Oh my word. You shouldn't ask me that. <laughs> it's terrible. My, actually my grandfather and one of my uncles committed suicide. It's just terrible. To have a son that is gay is it was a stretch. Many days I didn't even want to think about it. I still don't like thinking about it. I would describe David as a very sweet, kind, happy little fella as he was growing up. It was a little surprising that David was the one of our three sons who wanted to join the military because the other two were more um, rough and tumble. David was interested in music and growing flowers and things like that. So it was a little more surprising, I guess. If I had a choice, David would be straight, would marry a nice lady and have grandchildren, and we can fill up this room even, even more so. But uh, that wasn't what was in David's life. And I feel sad about it, I honestly do. And to me, it's a clumsy, it's a clumsy uh, thing to handle. I don't have the tools in my toolbox to handle all the issues that gay th uh, thinking brings to me. I would say there have been a lot of tears <laughs> and a lot of uh, soul searching. But the main thing about it is that David is a wonderful person and he is kind and thoughtful and loving and giving. So I want to just accept him the way he is and love him. And I don't want to be bothered by all kinds of people saying this or that about the gay community. I just want to love my son. This is David at graduation from high school. This is David probably somewhere in high school and uh, somewhere in the process in art class he made a collage of, of uh, pieces of black and blue and yellows and eyes and put together a face, a person crying his eyes out. And I've thought about this and I've wondered what kind of internal turmoil did David have during high school being gay but not being open, carrying this all inside of him. And so we've kept this picture just because to me it said a lot more than probably a person could say. I did think about taking my own life. I'm grateful that I never did act on it, but it certainly did cross my mind more than once. When David first told us that he struggled with homosexuality, he presented it to us after he thought he had victory over it and that he was and that he was going to that he was so glad he had finally got some victory over this inclination and I don't really know exactly what he was thinking at the time but that was the first time he ever said anything to us and I was just crying and crying and so devastated one reason was that I, my son should have such a huge struggle and never have talked to us about it. Two or three years ago, he told us he was just going to go with it. And because this is how God made him, I mean, he still loved God, he still wanted to follow God. But this is how God made him, and if God should send someone his way of the same sex to be with that he would be open to that and that was another adjustment 
that we had to go through. The gay issue in our family is divisive. We have four children, the oldest and the youngest aren't, aren't close to wrapping their arms around uh, anything gay. I am not going to try to convince anybody how they should think and what they should think because I can understand both sides of it. And if you were to ask me a number of years ago where I would be, I'd be with my oldest son and with my youngest son. I wouldn't go there. I just wish that they could understand all they can do in David's life to change anything or help him in any way is just to love him. And that the best you can do for another human being really is to love them and care about them and that they're, I don't know, I sort of think that they're boycotting his relationship with Reggie isn't going to help any and it's just going to hurt. David's very much a part of our family as each of the others and our role in this thing, and everybody has a different role in the family, but our role as parents will be to love each and to support each best we can. We met David's partner, Reggie, a few years ago, and I'm happy to meet David's friends. David's friends, because David's our boy, so David's friends are our people. And met and visited and it was one of my awkward days in life. I've had awkward days in life, but this was one of my awkward days in life. And, uh, and it's still a little clumsy. And, uh, but that's not because of who Reggie is. He's a fine person. It's just how, how to handle clumsy things in my life. I had a dream once, and I think I told David that I had this dream that um, I was at his and Reggie's wedding, but I wasn't really at the wedding. I decided I needed to go to the bathroom. And so I went to the bathroom and then by the time I got back to the wedding, um, Reggie and David were leaving in a spaceship, <laughs> like a rocket, and then the rocket crashed. And then I just wanted to, um, I was like, but I wasn't there. I needed to love you better, and I needed to love Reggie better, too. Quite a conversation we had, and uh, here we are sitting, David in the middle, our Washington, D.C. traveling man. Have you made any music yet? we got to make some music. Not since I've been home. Tonight. You need to play a song and sing. I always like that. I always like listening to you play and sing. This is the air I breathe. This is the air I can't believe that I'm finally able to take a photo of me and Reggie over to my parents to put up on the wall alongside my other siblings' families. This is my daily bread. This is my daily
is the air I breathe. This is the air I breathe. On the spot. Thinking about it, David joining the Air Force or the Kansas uh, Air Guard was a very new idea to me, both for him joining and for me thinking about it because we're not military family. I wouldn't have picked this for him, but Sometimes fathers don't know everything. The difference in getting to serve now versus when Don't Ask, Don't Tell still existed is simply the sense of freedom to bring my whole self to work, to just be able to focus knowing that I can contribute and interact just as openly as my coworkers have always been able to do. When Phil and I went to Washington, D.C. for David's promotion to be first lieutenant. I just remember sitting there thinking, wow, David sure is getting a lot of praise. And everybody all along the way has thought David so wonderful. And I just clearly remember sitting there thinking, yeah, David should be able to be in the military. It's crazy to think otherwise. He's so valuable to them and all his services are excellent. And just thinking that, that he should be kept out of the guard because he's gay is ridiculous. I would say regarding a gay airman in the Air Force, a gay person in the workplace, a gay person anywhere, I would suggest that a person's history and a person's work ethic and a person's record stands for an individual. He's got a reputation as a consummate professional and from what I understand the suicide prevention program uh, has had an immediate and measurable impact on the number of suicides that trended downward since Dave took over and I think that there's a lot to be said for the work that Dave has done in making that program a success. I'm a federal civilian employee in Washington, D.C., but I'm also in the Kansas Air National Guard. To see David go through from being a senior airman all the way through, for him to reach his goals makes me happier than anything. That's the highlight of my career. Well, the whole idea of, of allowing you know, gay and lesbians into the military is it opens up the pool of, of candidates. And you're not being restricted to those individuals. And honestly, the, the folks that I've worked with that have been gay or lesbian, whether they've disclosed it or not disclosed it, um, I, I think some of those are some of our most outstanding individuals. They work hard. There's, I mean, there's nothing about the way that they handle themselves from a, a sexual standpoint that impacts the organization. I mean, we need people that, that are great workers. It's all about, you know, delivering the mission. And as long as that doesn't impact the mission, the way that they handle their, their personal lives, it shouldn't impact our decisions on, on who should be working in our, our uh, military force. The Gates 2010 study identified that the LGBT community uh, in the Air National Guard totaled to about 3,500 members. The second most important part of that study is that we were able to identify that if you are an LGBT member, that your risk for suicide would be three times more than that of a straight member. So that's pretty significant, and we needed to make sure that every leader in the Air National Guard knew about this fact. And there are some folks who Sometimes it's based on where they were raised or the, the household they came from or maybe some of their long-held beliefs will struggle more uh, with this type of inclusiveness than other people. And I think it's incumbent upon those of us in leadership positions to help them understand how this adds strength to the organization, 
to help them get to know their fellow airmen as human beings. And ultimately, I think that will break down a lot of these barriers. I think we'll find that our airmen will rise to the occasion and we'll be a very inclusive organization. That'll make us stronger as a team. It'll make us more capable in the mission. Ultimately, uh, we'll serve the nation and we'll serve each other much better. A couple things stand out to me from what my parents shared. One is the, the question that's a statement almost of what difference does it make? What difference does it make if someone is gay and they want to serve in the military? If they're able to do the job and show up and get the mission done, what difference does it make? And that highlighted to me the, the importance of having consistent, strong leadership to create that space for every service member uh, to be able to do their job. And the second thing is that um, something my, my dad mentioned is the, at the end of the day, we're family and he wants to love me the best that he can and wants to see me succeed to the, to the best that I can. And I know that maybe not all gay people have the same degree of support from their parents, but I'm really grateful that I have, a, have that for mine. Just as coming out and coming to terms with who you might be individually takes time and there's growth and there's uh, lessons learned in that, that the Air Force and the Air National Guard equally is going through its own experience of that. So what I should tell you is that after the, the filming stopped, the photo goes up, the photo came down, but it went back up. And actually since then, my dad has told me that he's, he's done talking about anything serious from now on.